Okay, so I want y'all to think about in the Gospels, right? Where the man, I'm paraphrasing, where the man was talking about that he had the power to do what he want with Jesus because Jesus wasn't talking, right? And Jesus was like, you ain't got no power over me. The only power you got is the one that my father give you. And this is why I always promote relationship with God because when you have a relationship with God, God will be begin to reveal to you who you are in him and who he is. People do not have power over you. People in this world, they, they want you to be scared of them. Like they want you to think that they have all type of power. They have the power to hurt you, that they hurt you. So obviously they got this one up on you, but you got to realize that if God allowed it, it was a part of the plan. A lot of people are just playing their part in your story and they're, they're, they're rooting for it because God allowed it, you know, and one thing I'm realizing, these spirits like to try God's children. But what they fail to realize is the consequences of touching God's children. God allows you the free will of trying his child, but that doesn't take away the consequence of trying his child. And I wanted to say this because I was thinking about in the Gospels as well, where they were talking about... um God was like, it was not his time. When it is not your time, people cannot do what it is that God have cleared them to do or what it is that they want to do. It was only when the time have come that God allowed the enemy to take Jesus. See, in the enemy's mind or these people mind feel like, oh, it's, it's finally a green light. It's always probably that thing where they try and they, they don't succeed. Or it's that one time where they try you and they hurt you and they feel in themselves. They happy. They like, yeah, I did it. Da, 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 who they think they is. Who You feel me? People are bold behind the scenes, whatever. But, um, it made me realize that don't like people only have the power that God gives them. That's period point dot. Do not, do not think because it was taking place in this world that God is still not on the throne. When you read your Bible and you understand the times that we are in things have to come to pass prophecy must come to pass so it's certain things that's taking place because god already made known the end from the beginning god already knew that this was going to happen we just walking out the playbook you know so i want people to realize that god is still on the throne like sometimes like people have free will and they don't understand spiritual laws they're ignorant in spiritual things so they willingly put their self in danger like let's just be clear whether they realize it or not they open their self up they uh, open a legal right for the enemy to attack them i'm not saying it's right but at the end of the day god is not going to go against his word but when you are god's child baby you better best than believe that the enemy is only doing what god has allowed so realize that people don't have that power. They never had that power just because God allowed them to try you or hurt you or whatever the case may be, or they feel like they got power over you. That is a false narrative. It is an illusion that God is allowing the enemy to think like you got to sit here and think about it. One thing I'm realizing you, when you read the Bibles in the story, ain't nothing new under the sun. Everything is playing out the same the same way because you got to understand the, the same spirits that was then is the same spirits that is now. We just in a new modern Bible. And when you realize that the same thing that took place there is the same place that's taken now, the same spirit that was in Jesus is the same spirit that is in uh, his children. I'm not calling us Jesus. So don't get ahead of yourself and going because people love to take stuff that you didn't say. But I'm saying that same spirit, which means you're the, the servant is not greater than the master. The same thing Jesus went through is the same thing that you are going to go through. So you can take so you can take notes from what Jesus went through and understand the same spirits is coming for you. It may not be the same scenario, but it's going to be close. So when you start to open your eyes and realize that it's going to be a time where your enemies can't try you every time they're going to fail. But there will be a time where God is like, this is the time. Why? Because you cannot get to your resurrection unless you go through your crucifixion, unless you get to your cross. So when God allows the enemy to try you, this is the time people get happy. But see, people are ignorant. They allow the enemy to blind their minds that they don't realize that they're being used. Because guess what? <laughs> a spirit needs a body. And this, I think about Judas. Judas didn't know he was being used. And I know he didn't know he was being used. And it's, you just gotta, I ain't gonna even get into that part. When Judas, you read in the gospels, Judas asked, is it me, sir? And Jesus said, yeah, basically.
And Jesus said it was better for this man to not have lived. And this still this man still went to go b- betray Jesus. So what did that tell me? His mind was blinded. A lot of people don't realize the doors that they open, the things that they entertain, the sin that they're in. Okay, because when you look at this from a spiritual side, people are in pig's pants, but the enemy is always going to make death look good. And when you are carnally minded, you're not going to see it. So when you're in sin, indulging in sin, thinking you having the time of your life, the enemy is running you for a ride, a ride that you're not going to be able to answer for. A lot of times people don't realize that they're coming up against God when they're coming up against God's children. But see, that's the illusion. That's the enemy making people think, oh, it's just this person. But what did Jesus say? (laughs) What you do to me, you do to my father. Because it's Jesus who, it's God who sent Jesus. So when you realize that you're coming up against God, because this is God's battle. You got to understand that this is a, a, a spiritual battle taking place in human bodies quite frankly, but people are carnally minded and that leads to death because that allows the enemy to blind your mind and that allows the enemy to keep you so caught up in the carnal things that you don't realize that the the spiritual is the parent world world only thing that's taking place in this physical world is a representation of the spiritual world this is why a lot of people don't understand why they don't like people this is why a lot of times a lot of people always doing certain stuff and I would hear and I used to think you know certain people do stuff and I'm like why you do that and be back in your face because that's one thing when you're ignorant of not knowing who you are the enemy will continue to hurt you and then try to come back oh I'm sorry and you ask the person because you got to understand I believe spirits come and go unless you're fully possessed because I think about with Saul that spirit that tormented him came and go it wasn't always there so there is times when that person can be fully present and they don't understand why they did you the way they did you they really don't have a clue but that's because the spirit was working in them spirits influences human beings actions okay so um where was i going with this okay that's it y'all because i'll be trying not to make these videos long but just understand people do not have the power over you that they think that they have god allows certain people to play their part in they in your story god knows the end from the beginning you got to understand and read what the, i think the bible is really like the blueprint is preparing you preparing your heart for what's to come These people are going to do to you what they did to Jesus. I'm letting you know, go ahead and be alert, be sober minded because the devil runs, runs to and fro. That's what I had to realize. The devil is not sitting. He's on the move. He's trying to figure out who has an open door. Who can I use? Why? Because his time is short. His time is short and his his goal is to just bring everybody to hell with him. And people don't think it's a hell, but God, Jesus spoke on that. So I don't understand how people don't believe that God, not um, God won't send me to hell. You're right, but you will. Your choices will because God, as much as God loves you, God is not going to God is not going to go back on his word. God is not going to go back on his word. And when people really open their eyes and read the Bible and understand the principles, the precepts, the, the laws of the word, you, you got to get your mind right. Because yes, God loves you. God will never go back on his word. He put his word above himself. That's how powerful his word is. He's not going to go back on his word. He gave you a choice. The whole mankind fell because he did not go back on his word. He made a um, um, provision, I guess you can say, to be able to connect us back, which is Jesus. But he still didn't go back on his word. And he still, to this day, is not going back on his word. And this is why we're destroyed because of our lack of knowledge. We live in this fantasy of God is love, which is true. But what I'm realizing, you cannot put God in your box and just say, oh, God is love and I can live the life I want. And as long as I believe that there's a Jesus, I'm going to heaven. Even the devil, even the devil's belief is they going to heaven. Like we got to open our eyes and read the full context of the Bible because people take all I got to do is um, uh, believe in my heart and I'll be saved. (laughs) Okay, I guess you didn't read the part where he says there were many that will come to me talking about Lord, Lord. I cast out demons in your names. I did this and I did that. And he would say, I would depart from me. I never knew you. 
But you don't, people don't want to read that part. They only take parts and pieces of the Bible. And I realized that the enemy uses the word of God against God's children, against God's people. And what he does is he corrupts it and he perverts it like he do everything else. The enemy is not a creator. All he does is take what God created and pervert it. And this is why I had to realize the temptation that I was working on yesterday, my worksheet, that the enemy will see if you really know God's word. When he came to Jesus, drop, you know, God said that his angels will, you know, he would let you dash your foot against the stone. Basically, truly stating the scripture, right? But he used it in the wrong context because this is where Jesus was like, um, boy, get behind me. Basically, you know, it is written that we shouldn't, um, tempt the Lord, our God. Right. But with that, God made me realize that the enemy is going to test you to see if you truly know God's word. See, excuse me. If you know bits and pieces of God's word, you would just take that and be like, Oh, okay, that's true. Let me do it. Now you don't realize that you sinned against God because you didn't realize the full context of the word or you took bits and pieces, bits and pieces can be miss uh miss uh miss screwed corrupted perverted that is not what god the full context of god was using it in and if you don't really know your word the enemy has an advantage over you and this is where i'm just realizing <sighs> have a relationship with god okay because the enemy is out here using god's word and people are so spiritually ignorant they don't want to read the bible the enemy has them so distracted with the world that they don't want to take the time to study the bible to see the full context of what god is speaking about because something can be stated but that doesn't mean like if you like i think about what um i don't know if it was paul where he was talking about women shouldn't braid their hair and certain stuff like that what god revealed to me with that was he's not saying that women shouldn't do that what he's saying was he was talking to the pacific church and whatever church that was and he was speaking to the people because the people had a problem see i had to realize what sin for you may not be sin for somebody else because god looks at the heart so when you start to open your eyes and realize okay put all the scriptures together because all the scriptures is used for the edifying us into understanding understand what God is seeking from us right you would just go with the word oh it does say that just like I said they take oh if I believe with uh, believe in Jesus I'll be saved that don't make sense to me because I used to think like that because I didn't know the Bible and still I start reading about Lord Lord then I start thinking about it even the devils believe is does that mean they going to heaven no so we got to stop taking bits and pieces and allowing the enemy to feed us little crumbs and we take uh uh one quote a day oh I read my Bible verse for the day the good verses in Psalms when they don't realize that before certain things you got to see before you can get to that what is the prior say to that don't sit in the seat of the ungodly. Then you will be. It's a lot of thens and ifs and buts. And people don't realize that it's, it's those promises are contrary or those promises are contentive to your action. You have a part to play. So we're going to end it here. People don't have that much power over you. The enemy is only playing his part in your story. Um people live in illusions people live in fantasies okay know your word read your word stay in a relationship with god because the enemy is crafty he is subtle he will fool the very elect it's stay in god's word stay in god's presence and just open your eyes it's a lot of illusion and a lot of fog screens to get you to think people have power when god sits on the throne